So the funny thing is, Max Planck comes onto the scene. Here he is, a German. And he says, check this out. I'm gonna solve the ultraviolet catastrophe without even being particularly concerned about it. Max Planck was hired by utility companies to find out how to make a nice light bulb. So he was thinking about light bulbs like this and he was thinking, oh, do you think he used the Edison base over in Germany? I don't know, good question. He makes this, um, this is kind of a black body because it's designed, it's a filament in here that's designed to heat up. Oh, by the way, you should break these light bulbs if you have any. But there's a filament in here that's designed to heat up and it emits radiation and the power going into the light comes out most as heat, but a tiny bit as light, and he was trying to maximize the amount that came out as light. Maybe he should buy LED bulbs, but that wasn't an option in 1900. So he was doing all this thinking about it, and he was trying to get the question of why, um, why black bodies radiated in the way that they did. And remember, our issue is our issue is that intensity as a function of frequency is supposed to go like this by the current theory of the time, but it actually goes like this. And see foam green, it's like, and then it, yeah, it's pretty much over right there. So this is real, and this is classical. Classical physics, that is, I mean, generally the physics of the 1800s and earlier, cannot possibly explain what is happening with black body radiation. So Planck says this is the most heretical and insane idea ever. Bear with me now as I tell you that Planck says that energy cannot be arbitrary values. He says that energy is quantized and thus breaks open the enormous field of quantum physics. Energy is N times H times the frequency of the oscillator. And he's saying that N is some integer. It's probably going to be a very big integer. But here's the issue. He's treating the black body as having things in, well, you know what? No, he's not even doing that. He's just saying, hey guys, this makes the math work out. It took Einstein. Literally, it took an Einstein to figure out the implications of this statement right here. But Planck says, hey guys, the math works out. That's cool, we've got it solved. And he goes on with his life. But the cool thing is this H gets to be called Planck's constant. The cool thing about Planck's constant is it is fantastically small. Planck's constant turns out to be 6.63 times 10 to the negative, get ready, 34th. And it's in units of joule seconds. You can find it in other units other places, but I prefer it in SI units of joule seconds. So this is a unit of energy time. Ooh, cool. Because if I multiply frequency by Planck's constant, then I have to get rid of the seconds, right? There's one over seconds here, there's seconds right there, so I'm gonna get units of joules. So this is what Planck does, and in a few videos, maybe one video, maybe two, I don't even know, eventually I will explain why or well, uh, what this means, but here's what he's saying. He's saying that if we've got energy coming out of here, the reason that you don't get any of this classical behavior here is because the shaking that's happening inside this box, there's not enough energy present in the individual bits that are shaking to emit any light at higher frequencies than that. That's what quantization does for us. It says in order to have any light coming out at a certain energy, you've got to have something shaking with that frequency. And there isn't enough thermal energy inside of here to have any appreciable amount of light coming from any frequency above this level right here. The frequency, maximum frequency is gonna depend on temperature, of course, and the um, peak frequency is gonna depend on temperature. All that stuff depends on temperature, but for a given temperature, you don't have what they call the ultraviolet catastrophe because of quantization. Now, who's gonna go and tell me that I can't have half of one of this amount of energy? The universe is really deep weird now and you're gonna have to deal with that but the cool thing is that n seems to be a really big number in normal circumstances because I never feel like I can push my I can push my sister on the swing right and you've possibly pushed your sister on the swing and she's like we and she says do an underdog and it's gonna be fun we right 
You never noticed that you couldn't get her to go at some speed in between two speeds. You kind of thought that she could have any arbitrary speed at all. But when I'm saying that energy is quantized, I'm saying that there are certain speeds that she can't have because if her kinetic energy is one half mv squared, then it's quantized and she can't have certain speeds. I'm sorry, she just can't.